Hello you guys, it's Seth again, of course. I'm never sure if I should do like a proper intro where I'm like, hey guys, welcome to my channel. Or if I should just get into things like I usually do. I'm not typically a super scripted person. I kind of just make my content as my brain sees fit. But today I have something different for you guys. Before you watch the rest of this video, I just wanted to give a little content warning. This is, I will be talking about panic attacks, about um, bad drug situations, about, about eating disorders and, and just food in general. So if any of those topics are going to affect your mental health negatively, then maybe go ahead and skip this video. I have plenty of other videos for you to watch if you're still interested in my content. Before I get into everything, I would love it if you liked this video and subscribed to me. I just barely hit 1,000 subscribers and I'm so excited. That's a dream. That is like, I cannot comprehend 1,000 people having the potential to watch my things. And I'm also holding myself to uploading at least once a week, every single week, but hopefully more because I really, really want to commit to this whole YouTube thing. So yes, please subscribe. It helps me out so, so, so much. And then comment. Comment different questions you have throughout the video, different comments about all the things that I'm about to show you and things like that. And yeah, let's just get started. So I am not typically a super... I don't know, I kind of keep I keep all of my stories to myself. So I've always been a little bit more closed off and shy, but I, in the past like three years, I have gone through some really insane things and I would love nothing more than to be able to help other people who are going through or have gone through similar things by telling you my story and my experience and how I've been able to overcome these things so that hopefully it helps you guys or at least comforts you guys so that you know that you're not alone. I wanna tell you guys how having a panic attack changed my entire life. I'm also going to show you my entire t-shirt collection when I tell you the story of everything because if I do say so myself, I am incredible at t-shirts. I have a gorgeous collection and I'm very passionate about a t-shirt. Like, in my opinion, if you are gonna have a t-shirt, you might as well make it one that you like and one that fits your style. And for everything, for going to the gym, for hanging out, for hanging out at the beach, for going to sleep, for your everyday everything. I love having t-shirts that I actually like or that are funny to me or whatever it is. That way it's just an extra pocket of life that I can say makes me happy. Okay, so I'm obviously gonna start with the one that I have on and then I'll change into a different one. But this one is actually like a misprint from my clothing line. I have a clothing line, if you didn't know. I wanted to start out in my t-shirt. I The clothing line is called Bow Babies and it's a bunch of cool, like kitschy, vintagey baby animals with bows for ears. And the link will be in my description for t-shirts and for hoodies and for different apparel featuring my design and I would love for you to support my business and to grab something if you want to because it would be a dream for the entire world to be wearing my Bow Babies collection but let's move to the next t-shirt. Okay this t-shirt is a vintage Adidas t-shirt in a size extra large. It has the three stripes on the sleeves and then this awesome little stripe and it's just this really gorgeous like muted purple and I just like it. I like how it's kind of sporty casual um, and then I really like this color on me as well. Let's go way back to the beginning when I was a kid. First of all, I was born in 2003. I don't tell anybody my birthday to remain mysterious, but I was born in 2003. Um, I have four siblings, three of which I lived with immediately. And I lived with my mother and my father. And both of my parents were extremely overweight, like extremely, I'm talking 500 plus pounds each. And that obviously, that obviously had a massive effect on me, my relationship with food, the way that I ate, what I ate and like everything like that. Because when you're a kid, you typically eat and act the way that your parents do. I just so happened to have parents who really, really struggled with emotional eating, binge eating, and just honestly lack of knowledge for most things, nutrition in general. Another part of my childhood that really affected my teen years and my adult years is how much my parents were always dieting and how my siblings and I were always kind of forced into these diets with them because 
we had to eat the way that my parents ate and then also we were all a bit chubby because we were eating the way that they ate so as a kid my house was always a mess always like it was so rare for our house to be clean at all and i think that that's really important especially being a kid to be able to feel like you can make a mess and have fun and play but it was more than just toys and like dishes here and there it was really really messy and my mom held on to a lot of junk a lot of the time and then there were also just always soda cans everywhere and food wrappers and just just so much junk everywhere and i was just in a constant environment of unhealthy eating unhealthy habits unhealthy mindset around food and i was also constantly watching my parents try to fix each other's problems with food and, and not necessarily good food either my parents were constantly eating entire boxes of cake whenever they were upset or giving each other a way like way 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 too much candy for a holiday and then eating it all at once and like i said that really affected me and it impacted the way that my habits were formed let's move on to the next t-shirt this is my green m&m shirt the brand tag literally just says m&m i believe this is also a size extra large and it is just the sexy green m&m i do have a few ink stains on here but this is one of my staple post shower shower shirts and just like around the house shirts just because i think she's cute i think she's funny let's move on to the next part of my story so after all that occurred we moved a bunch and it just kind of kept growing and growing and growing these habits and we were all growing up and everything and then eventually my parents divorced and all of my siblings chose to go live with my dad and i choose to live with my mom now at this point in my life was actually really hard for my mom because she was going through a lot of things and she didn't really feel like she had a lot of support and she had like a hard time with her family and everything and it kind of it made her very very my hair is so crazy it made her very very neglectful of me as well as projecting like she was she was really projecting what she was feeling onto me all the time and all of everything happening to her at that moment ended up causing her to lose a bunch of weight she was going on walks all the time she was cleaning up her diet and she was exercising and everything and she ended up losing like 200 plus pounds she was doing really 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 incredible but i was at a really low point in my life i was struggling with a lot of depression a lot of like just lack of motivation in general and loneliness from not being with my siblings and them all getting to grow up together and me just being by myself with my neglectful <laughs> mother so that was really really hard for me and she noticed that i wasn't doing well but the problem is that she never really reached out to me to help all she ended up doing was kind of trying to force me to lose weight because at this point in my life i weighed about 220 230 pounds i was overweight i was binge eating i was emotional eating i was applying all of the habits that i had learned from my parents my whole life and i just was not doing well at all i was at a really really low point in my life and i was like trying to go through high school and everything like that at the same time and i remember vividly my mom waking me up one morning and like trying to give me diet pills to lose weight and just constantly trying to project her weight loss onto me and that was really hard for me because i never really felt beautiful and i never felt like i was enough until i lost weight because that's how my mom viewed herself she didn't think that she was enough until she lost weight so she projected that same ideology onto me and it affected me a lot and it made me actually eat more and 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 create an even tighter emotional attachment to food and, and especially food that wasn't so good for me and here is the next t-shirt it says touch my monkey has a monkey on it if you didn't know this about me i collect monkeys i'm kind of a monkey girl i have so many different monkey things they're my favorite animal um i'm not i love this shirt because i love the way it fits i love it's an extra extra large it's a lovely pajama shirt i'm not a fan of the color on me i think that it, it doesn't bring out the features that i want it to so i would really like to dye it like a nice brown or something like that but i don't know let me go let me know what you guys think if i should dye it or not or if it looks cute red but anyway, so after a while of living with my mom, it just didn't end up working out. We were always fighting 
for whatever reason, just bashing heads and we just didn't get along for a lot of different reasons. And one day, very shortly after I turned 18, I had just recently gotten a job. I was finally starting to go to the gym and just feel a little bit more active and trying to really change my life. I didn't quite know how to grab a hold of my life to even change it, but I was trying. And uh, my mom had come back from a very long trip to go see her boyfriend at the time. And she just had a really bad trip and she was asking me for advice and everything. I gave her advice and then she ended up approaching me and saying that I needed to start paying rent. And this for me was kind of a difficult topic because my mother had been taking advantage of a lot of the money that she was getting for me and my siblings because she was getting paid child support and alimony and all of these things to which I saw barely any of it and none of my siblings saw any of it either. And so she took it upon herself to tell me that I needed to start paying rent. And I was actually pretty emotionally mature at this point and I had said to her, hey, that actually sounds like a really lovely idea to, to try and learn some discipline and some responsibility and just understanding like how rent works and to get on the lease and everything like that. But I did tell her, I would really like to sit down with you and talk about this because I, you don't have a college fund for me. You don't, you like, there is no systems in place to help me succeed moving out, especially if I'm expected to give you a large chunk of the money that I'm earning every day just for your benefit, even though even though my father was paying her rent and her food plus extra money on top of that because of the divorce. My mom really didn't like that I approached her with asking if we could talk further about it and where the money is going. And I think she felt really threatened by that because she was very, because she was just really insecure in general and insecure financially. She had an awful relationship with money, which also affected me. And she ended up saying, get out of my house, like get out of my house. So I left and I was crying and I was like not feeling good at all. I ended up hanging out with one of my close friends at the time and just telling her everything. And let's do the next t-shirt and then I'll keep telling the story. This is an Erica Badu t-shirt from the album Mama's Gun. My boyfriend got it for me. I believe he like printed, on, printed it on Redbubble or something like that. But I think this one's a size medium. I love the shade of green. I think it's so pretty. And, but I don't wear this shirt that often just because it's not one of my favorites, but I do like having it in my collection. But anyway, I ended up receiving a text from her saying, you need to get everything from your room out of my house tonight, otherwise I'm going to leave it out for the garbage men, quote unquote. Not the greatest thing. If you're a mother, I would not recommend doing that to your daughter because it does not really do very much for um, the good of the world. But... But I just, I just took it like a champ. I packed up all my things and I got in my car and that is where I lived for the next few months. At this point in my life, I was still binge eating. I was still emotionally eating. I did have a job. So I, it's not like I was homeless and jobless. So I was still able to make some money. I was also working on my jewelry business in my car, which was, which was quite the hassle, but I did it either way. And I was just honestly trying to ride the waves of life as much as I could. I lived on the beach, so it was it was nice waking up to the beach every morning and there were forests around me, so I went on hikes and stuff, but it was very lonely and it was really sad and it was hard being homeless. It was cold, it was uncomfortable. I ended up having a lot of back issues because of it, but it was amazing and it was wonderful learning how to be my own best friend and how to take care of myself and how to comfort myself in like the lowest times in my life and to be happy regardless be great I really learned how to be grateful and how to be as proactive with everything that i'm given as i possibly can and at that point i was given a job and i was given a car and so i lived in it and i did my best i didn't complain i didn't tell anybody that i was homeless i just i just lived in my car it was hard but it was honestly one of the best times of my life up it up like from that point up to that point um but then it started getting very cold and very rainy and i was in so much pain because of sleeping in my car every night 
And so I hit up my dad. I'm not huge on my dad for, for personal reasons, but I hit him up to ask if I could live with him in Vegas. Okay, this shirt is funny. I remember when I first got it, like everyone in the world had it. It was, it was sold at Walmart for a while. This is, I, I believe, a 2XL as well, or maybe an XL. But it's just like a bunch of cats and kittens. I like this shirt, it's cute. But I'm not a huge white wearer. Like I typically pick grays or blacks over white, but this is, this is kind of like another cleaning or post shower shirt or something. But anyway, I asked my dad if I could come live in his house in Vegas with my siblings. And he said yes. And so soon after, I moved from that place in California to Vegas and that was a terrible idea. It was horrible, but I was experiencing a little more freedom at the time. I was kind of freshly 18 and I was just excited to be out of my car, honestly. Okay, I'm not gonna go too into this story, this part of the story because maybe I'll do a separate video on that if you guys are curious, but I've never been into drugs or alcohol. I've had maybe a few sips of alcohol my entire life and I've smoked a little tiny bit of weed, but I went to go visit one of my friends in LA when I lived in Vegas and um, she was, she is kind of more in the drug scene and she, we wanted to smoke some weed together and I like I said I was really naive to this stuff and I kind of just wanted to fit in and like make her like me which was which was like my fault that was on me that I did that but it's it's just a lesson learned but we ended up she ended up buying some weed and um, I ended up having a terrible high like the worst feeling ever Okay, next t-shirt. This is a shirt from The Mountain. It's a size extra large. And also just to clarify, most of these shirts I got thrifting besides so far that Walmart shirt I did buy straight from Walmart like years ago when they were sold. But I'll let you know if I didn't get it thrifting. I'll always tell you if there's a brand tag and everything like that. But anyway, I had a terrible high. I, Everyone that knows anything about drugs that I've told this story to has told me that I was definitely laced and... I kind of just want to take this second of the video to spread awareness to things like that and to really be safe and to not just buy drugs, to buy drugs, even if it's just weed, but to, and to really be careful and to take care of your body because it can really, really affect your life and it can change your life completely. And that, that is what it did to me. It was awful. And I'll keep telling the story so that you know what happened. So I get back from my trip in LA and I'm in Vegas and my dad's fiance at the time and my little sister and I decided to do something, to do a bonding exercise and go to the movies. I hadn't been to the movies in a while, but it like it was the movies. So we went and we had some popcorn and I think I ended up getting like some Swedish, Swedish fish or whatever. An update on my weight at this time. I was gaining weight rapidly because now I was living with my dad and there was so much junk food in the house. There was barely any healthy food at all and the healthy food that was there wasn't very easily, like wasn't very easy to eat. Like I had to prepare it to eat it and I didn't quite have the energy for that because of everything that I was going through. And I was running my small business at the time as well. But I had ended up gaining like 40 pounds just from living in Las Vegas. And I was only there for like two months. I was gaining weight so rapidly. But I ended up, I ended up going to this movie with my little sister and my dad's fiance at the time. And this movie was very, very, very dark. Like it, it was just about this girl who's going through these things that I had also gone through. And I won't go into what exactly that is because I'm not quite comfortable sharing, but it was a really, really terrible movie. Really well done, the actress did great, and I'm sure, and the storyline was great, but for me, it was terrible. And that is when I had my very first panic attack. That movie changed my life forever. I remember I was sitting there, I was just eating popcorn, and what was happening on the screen was also happening in my brain. This one I got off of eBay for like $3. It's a giraffe and then there's like a monkey holding its neck. Um, the word says Tanzania and there's no tag on the back, but I believe it's a size extra large and it's navy blue. I really like this piece, I think it's super cute. But 
Anyway, I remember that panic attack was terrible because I had never had that feeling before, but I remember I was just sitting there eating and I was convinced that everything was that was happening on the screen was my destiny as well and that I would be forced to go through everything that she was going through and my mind was just spiraling and spiraling. I ended up rushing to the bathroom, breaking down, crying. It was awful and terrible. And then I ended up having that panic attack, that same panic attack for two weeks straight. I would wake up panicking, I would be panicking all day and then I would go to sleep panicking and there was zero breaks. I was never not panicking. I remember I lived on my bathroom floor at that point and I felt so bad for my sister because she can never use the bathroom, but I just couldn't escape. I was completely, I was in mental torment for the next few weeks. And I was still eating and everything, but I was also really, really, really sick because I ended up going to this music festival with one of my best friends in Vegas, um, kind of during the same time. And I was so scared of the air. I was constantly holding my breath because I was afraid that I was gonna get high because of what had happened to me in LA. And that music festival was awful for me because I spent most of the festival just as close to the ground as I, as I could and as far away from the crowd as I could as well, as well to just stay away from the drugs because I was so afraid. So I was super sick, like physically and mentally for a while in Las Vegas. And I remember, and then eventually I hit my breaking point. I could not handle it anymore. So I ended up calling my aunt and I was like, listen, this is everything that happened. I'm having the hardest time in my whole entire life. What do I do? And she ended up saying, come home, come back to Idaho and live with me for a while and just, just come here, like, let me help you. So I did, I moved to Idaho. I moved to Idaho like a few days later. Well, I didn't quite move yet, I just flew there. And at this point I was still eating, I was still, I was eating a little bit better because my aunt had a much better diet than my dad did. And um, I was also like in a new environment and I wasn't in my own home. So it was a little bit harder to like sneak food in my bedroom and stuff, but I still definitely was binging. I definitely was emotionally eating. It's just that the foods that I was provided were a lot better for me. Okay, this shirt is genuinely one of my favorite shirts in the entire universe. The tag, the tag just says genuine tea. It's a size extra large. I found this thrifting. I love this shirt. This was, this was my t-shirt of the summer last year. I always tend to have like a t-shirt of the summer and this was my t-shirt of the summer and it might just be my t-shirt of this summer too. It is gorgeous. She's so beautiful. I love, I love the coloring. This t-shirt is so pretty, but I am wearing it backwards. This is the back of the shirt and that is a huge hack for a lot of the t-shirts that I have. Some t-shirts aren't so cool, but the back of the t-shirt is so cool. So I wear it on the front because I just like it better that way. But anyway, so I was eating a little bit better at the time. I was just not focusing on myself at this point. I was just hanging out with my cousins and helping my aunts and just trying my best to distract myself in general because focusing on myself was like the last thing that I could do at that point because I was so, I was in such mental torment constantly. Um, but that part of my life was actually really good. It was a wonderful time to focus on other people and just spend time with children, which is always really healing and everything. But this time in my life was really hard because my aunt is very religious and she kind of had this idea. She kind of had this idea that if I didn't join her church, that I would never be fully healed and that I would never be happy. And that was really damaging when I was like trying to heal from some really hard things that had happened to me. But I, I still lived with her and it was wonderful. She is a really wonderful woman and I will always love her and appreciate everything that she did for me at that time. But I was still struggling with panic attacks. I was still struggling with like really severe anxiety and um, I would just constantly be be in my head and panic panicking about different things that happened to me. And I was also in this really really dark time in my life where I was blaming myself for everything in the entire world and I think it's really important to take responsibility but I think it can get really unhealthy when you start blaming yourself and telling and telling yourself that you deserve everything that happened to you and that you're the reason that your mom kicked you out and said that she doesn't love you and things like that and so, so I was just really going through my mental torments while I was also trying to heal um, 
but I was really grateful to do that around a knowledgeable mother type figure. This shirt is the brand The Mountain. It's a cool like tiger forest scene. It's a size large. I got it at a reptile expo a while ago. But anyway, I started leaning into my fears and that is kind of where I went downhill is I was so I was so caught up in my head and everything that I was afraid of that I started just making up stories of reasons to be afraid for more and more and more and more things and it kind of started with food and I would get like dizzy every time that I would eat and I would convince myself that I was dizzy and that kind of started this highway in my brain that thought that food equals evil and that every time I eat, I get high for some reason. I ended up developing a really nasty fear of everything. Soap, water, skincare, makeup, the air, food, like literally anything that anybody else in the world has ever touched. I was so afraid of everything. I was afraid of cleaning products. I was afraid, I was afraid of the microwave. I was scared of everything. I was scared of my own bed. I was scared of my own clothing. I would like have a panic attack before I like changed my clothes or before I brushed my hair because I was afraid that every single little thing that I did or didn't do would give me a panic attack or make me dizzy or get me high. And it was so bad. It was so severe. And it was to the point where like somebody could touch a pen, like a writing pen, and I would go into this crazy story in my head of all the reasons why they are contaminated and then therefore that pen is contaminated and then therefore if I touched that pen, I would get high and I would feel dizzy and I would feel out of control. And that applied to literally every single thing in my life and I was... I was in the lowest point I've ever been. It was terrible. It lasted a few months and I was miserable. At that point, I wasn't eating anything besides Lifeway Kefir. It's like a probiotic yogurt drink. I don't know why I chose that, but I had that sometimes, like very, very rarely, just when I was like, like when I, when I didn't have a choice but to have a little tiny bit of nutrients I had that, but even then it was rare. That period of my life lasted about two and a half months and I ended up losing 70 pounds, which was crazy. First of all, do not ever do that. I screwed up my hair, I screwed up my, I had awful acne, I was miserable, I screwed up my metabolism, I screwed up my skin elasticity, I screwed up so many things in my body just because of not eating. And I, I was not starving myself to lose weight. I was starving myself because I was afraid that if I ate, I would get dizzy. And, but losing weight just happened to be the byproduct of that. And it did end up changing my life for the better in the future. But in the moment, I destroyed myself. And I do not, I will ne I, I, I beg you to never do that to yourself, ever. I really wanna take a minute to say, if you are going through something like this, please do your best to get help. Reach out to me if you need to, reach out to your loved ones and try to get out of this, try to get out of that headspace because not eating and not nourishing your body really screws you up. Some things that I had was acne, awful acne, so much hair loss, my metabolism tanked. I was insanely depressed, I had so much anxiety, I I was just feeding into all of my fears. I had insane muscle loss. I was, sorry for TMI, but I was incredibly constipated. I wasn't eating anything, so I would, nothing was going out. And it ended up like giving me some pretty bad gut issues. And also I had really bad problems with my breathing because I was constantly holding my breath because I was afraid of the air. And so I was never breathing properly. This next t-shirt, is one of my favorite t-shirts. It's so cool. I found it thrifting in Berkeley one time when I was on a trip with one of my friends. It's gorgeous. It does not have a tag other than that it says Hanes Beefy T. But this is the shirt. I love it so much. I love that it's oversized and I love that it's black because I prefer wearing black. But anyway, so I lost a bunch of weight and I lost my mind with it. And this was a really confusing time for me because I had finally lost weight after trying, trying and trying to lose weight and just trying so many diets and so much exercise and so many like, so many crash diets and things like that. 
that never ended up making me lose weight until this time and I was so confused because I was like the one time that I wasn't trying to lose weight I lost all of it and very unhealthily and that was really confusing for me but I ended up learning all the lessons later which I'm very grateful for. So then after some very 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 difficult interventions with my aunts and with my own head I finally started eating eating again. It was really hard and my my body had a really hard time processing things because I screwed up my metabolism and I screwed up my stomach and I but I started with small things I would eat like cottage cheese and a banana every day and that was better than nothing and I started eating a few other things but it honestly took a year at least a year to recover to recover even slightly from this it was so detrimental to my health but but one thing that helped me so, so, so much is distractions. Every time that I would eat, because everything was scary for me, every time that I would eat, I would make sure that I was distracted, that I was playing a game, that I was on the phone, that I was talking to my friends. Because focusing on how I felt when I was eating the food was my was my detriment, you know? It, it, it was what was really affecting my eating habits. And so I did everything but focus on it as much as I could. And that is my biggest tip. If you have fear foods, if you struggle with certain foods or eating in general, really just try and distract yourself. That is one of the biggest tips that I can possibly give. And I, and I still practice that to this day. If there's ever something that I'm afraid of eating, I always just make sure that I'm distracted after I eat so that I am not overthinking it. During this time, it was still bad. I still was not eating enough at all. I was not nourishing myself properly at all. I had like two safe foods maybe, and I was just I was just eating as much as I could of those things, which was not. I was working a job at a used furniture store at this time too, so I was like really active and not eating enough, and it just wasn't good at all. Um, and then also a little bit of backstory too. When I had my panic attack, I could feel the sides of my brain, like one, one side of my brain went completely cold, like completely cold and numb and I couldn't feel it. And I remember I would wake up every morning and the left side of my entire body would just feel completely numb, it was terrible. And I ended up going to a doctor later and I was told that I was having a bunch of mini strokes, which is really interesting and I'm not like affected by it now because I've healed since then, which I can tell you more about that, but it's just really interesting that that happened to me. But I remember, at this point, I was still doing really bad, but mentally, I was working on myself so much. I was doing this therapy course. I was reading a lot of self-help book, self books and everything, and that helped me out a lot. And I remember one day I woke up, and I just kind of started feeling my brain. I just kind of started feeling the left side of my brain again, and it was such a pivotal moment in my life. I remember I was crying because I was just standing there. I think I was eating a banana, and I just felt the left side of my brain again for the first time in, like, six months and my aunt was in front of me and I just was crying and I was like I can feel the left side of my brain like this is crazy and she was like super excited for me but I was still not doing very well I was still not eating enough I was still like having a lot of panic attacks a lot of anxiety problems and I was still struggling with depression and I was struggling just like kind of being the victim of my own life and just letting all these things happen to me instead of like taking power over them. This next shirt, it doesn't have a tag. It's a size extra large. I, I just think it's kind of cool. I'm wearing it backwards. I typically wear this one to the gym. Um, it's not like a outfit type of shirt in my opinion, but it is like a cool t-shirt kind of shirt. Okay, so I was definitely making some progress, but I still was not doing very good at all. And then I eventually had to move out of my aunt's house because she had a family to raise. She has 11, 10, 10 kids, by the way. And so that was like kind of hard to live with, especially just having like another grown person in the house. So I ended up moving to California and I ended up moving in with my boyfriend because we, because we loved each other and we loved being around each other and I needed a place to go. And so I ended up moving in with my boyfriend. This is my Apple shirt. I love this shirt. She's navy blue, size large. The tag just says Haynes Beefy Tea again, but I love this shirt. I think she's so cute. I love apples. I think they're one of the cutest fruits and also one of the most scrumptious fruits. But anyway, so I moved in with my boyfriend in California and this ended up being a giant 
blessing. I had re a really hard time living there for separate reasons, but for my relationship with food and for my panic attack stuff, this was a huge blessing. He was so kind. He was so helpful. He also has a degree in kinesiology and a bunch of like nutrition things and he just studied so much nutrition for college and that ended up helping me so much. I remember at the beginning of living with my boyfriend, my diet was still very minimal. I was eating plain oatmeal, nothing on it besides maybe a banana sometimes. I was still drinking um, kefir sometimes and I think maybe like cucumbers. My diet was so minimal because I was so afraid of everything and he just really, really, really encouraged me to start trying things and just made me aware of, of how bad I was being to my body and how detrimental it could be and how it could really like end my life a lot sooner than I want it to. And I started trying things very slowly. I still have memories of the first time I tried lettuce, the first time I tried almonds, the first time I tried honey. Honey and maple syrup were crazy for me because I was so afraid of sugar. Like sugar was one of the, the, the hugest fear foods for me, but I finally tried honey and maple syrup and now I eat those things all the time. But I have vivid memories of trying every single food again because I had been like a year since I had eaten anything substantial and um, it was really hard. I would have breakdowns and panic attacks over every single new food, but he was an angel through it and he just really, he like looked up all the benefits and stuff with me and I ended up running with that and feeling really, really good and I was really healing my body. And it's crazy because also at first I was even more afraid of something if it was healthy for you because I was like, oh, if it's healthy for me, then that means that it's going to do something in my body and it's going to make me feel a certain way and make me feel out of control. But then I ended up switching that narrative and deciding like, no, the healthy things are the good feelings that you need to feel. And it's just normal things that you've already felt in your life before that you deserve to feel again. And so I started eating healthy things. Like I said, don't get me wrong. I would still have panic attacks before I tried everything, before I tried cashews, before I tried goji berries, before I tried almond milk. I would, I would have like a mini little panic attack before everything, but I would always tell myself like, you can either live in fear and live in fear for the rest of your life or you can control your own life and you can decide and you can decide how your life is going to be and i did not want to live in fear for the rest of my life because i watched so many generations do that and i didn't want that to be me as well anymore it's still really scary but i would have i would rather have one huge moment of fear and then get over it rather than a ton of moments of fear for the rest of my life Okay, this is the next t-shirt. I believe it's a size 2XL. It's very oversized. The tag says Pro USA, but this shirt is so cool. I'm gonna stand up so you can see it. But, but I love this shirt. Look at it. His dreads are like bedazzled and his, he's like smoking the microphone here. I love, I love this shirt so much. I genuinely think this is one of the coolest shirts I have. I actually asked my sister for it for my birthday a few years ago and so she got it for me it was on ebay for like 20 bucks or something like that love this shirt i'm gonna start changing into shirts more often because i'm starting i'm starting to run out of story but anyway i was definitely really healing from food and getting a lot better but i was still so afraid of the air because of my bad weed experience and so i was still holding my breath all the time it was so scary i eventually was genuinely doing a lot better and i was really proud of myself there were a few things that i was still completely like against like taking vitamins was so scary for me because it was like a pill um but my boyfriend ended up convincing me of all the reasons why I should and why my body actually needs it, probably more than the average body because of how long I was malnourished for. And then once I felt like I had my food kind of more in control, I started to realize that I did live a pretty sedentary life. I was sitting down a lot of my life. I was kind of just making jewelry all the time and um, just sitting in bed reading and you know just doing whatever. And that's kind of how I've been my entire life. I've always been very sedentary and I realized that I wanted to change that because I ended up getting super into nutrition and super into just health in general. This t-shirt is my Jamaica t-shirt. The tag says Island Tees. This is a size large. I like it. I like the stripes right here and I, I just like a fun little sports tee. I wear this all the time, like in and out. I just got it recently. Anyway, so I was, 
I got super into health and nutrition and everything like that. And I wanted to add physical activity to that because I wasn't the most active person in the world. My cardio wasn't very good. My stamina wasn't very good. And so I just wanted to take care of my body um, now that I was like finally taking care of my nutrition. And so I started walking all the time and I would walk and read at the same time. And I would finish like a book in three days because I was walking like three hours every single day and I was reading while I was walking which isn't necessarily the safest thing ever but I was approaching it pretty safely and I also like safety wasn't the first thing in mind for me at the time I'm more focused on getting better habits as a, such as reading and and walking and so I just combined the two because that's kind of what I had time for and something that motivated me to do both of those things so I was doing that and I was going to the gym all the time and I was starting to like feel good in my body, but I was over exercising now. I was walking to and from the gym every single day, every single day. I would not let myself not do that because I was so, like I was too disciplined, like to the point where I felt like if I didn't do it, I was a failure, which is completely like not the point of discipline. The point of discipline is being able to do something Monday through Friday party on Saturday and Sunday and being able to get right back into it on Monday. Not completely basing your self-worth off of doing the same exact thing every single day. I ended up actually losing my period at this time because I was exercising so much. And it's super interesting too because at this point in my life, I still had like an excess amount of fat in my body. So I was like determined to get that off because I had already lost so much weight unhealthily and then I and then I'm like healing nutritionally and healing my mind. And now I wanna lose the rest of my weight and get toned healthily, but it just wasn't working because I was over exercising at this point And I was just like obsessing way too much over food, over nutrition. And I was just like, I was just obsessing, honestly. This next shirt is so funny. It's one of my favorites. I got it so long ago thrifting. There's no tag, but it says, what's your O face? Which is really funny to me, but anyway, but anyway, I was really severely obsessing over all these things. When it comes to food and everything, I was eating all right, but I still, like to this day, I still really struggle with other people preparing me food, other people giving me food, offering me food. Like I, I just am convinced that it's gonna be contaminated just considering that other people don't have the same standards that I do when it comes to nutrition and health and cleanliness. And so I'm really afraid that like somebody who smokes weed is gonna like smoke weed and then touch their cheese and then offer me a slice of cheese a few days later. And that just really scares me still, but it's something that I'm still growing from. But then I ended up going through some other personal things and I made the decision to move into my own place, which is where I am now. I now live in Idaho. Um, I moved, I moved here in November of 2023 and it is now March and I'm so grateful that I did. It was one of the greatest decisions of my entire life. This t-shirt is a size large. It's from the brand Stray Rats and it's just a rat on a shirt. I really like the shirt. Um, I actually really like the brand Stray Rats, but it's not very typical that I buy myself something online, but this was a splurge. I think I bought it for myself for like Christmas or something like that, but I really like the shirt. It's cute. I love rats, so. Moved here and it was really hard because I was, I was really struggling with some personal things and I really, I watched myself like try and go back into not eating and then also try, try and go back into binge eating and emotional eating. And I just like watched this teeter totter of these like two polar opposite things that I have taught myself in the past and trying to like pick which one to use to cope with these things that I was going through. And I remember I had this like epiphany that neither of those ha neither of those things have to be my story anymore. And that I don't have to align with either of them just because I went through them. And just because once I was struggling with binge eating and overeating, and once I was struggling with under eating and, and um, depriving myself of food, it does not mean that that ever has to be my story again, just because it's something that I used to go through. And that really changed my life because I was able to let go of that story and let go of that happening and let go of me treating myself that way and then invite tight room for a new way of thinking and a new way of approaching food and the absence of food and everything like that. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. My boyfriend got it for me for my birthday. It's me and a monkey, of course. I decided to learn from all those things that I went through instead of 
drowning myself in the possibility of doing either of those. I was able to apply all of this discipline to my new life and to this this dream life of mine that I always had. Okay, these next few shirts that I'll be showing are baby tees and I prefer not to show my arms. Whenever I wear baby tees, I always put a jacket over them. So I'll have a jacket over the next few t-shirts, um, but you'll still be able to see the graphic and everything. This one is super cool. It's from the brand Fader, I believe. I got it for like six bucks on eBay. It's a monkey holding a banana. Of course I had to have it. Do you see me? One huge thing that I think about all the time too is that going through all of those things allowed me to accomplish some of my biggest dreams while not struggling with binge eating and overeating, while not struggling with my weight like that and not struggling with these awful like mental problems. And I still do struggle with some depression and some anxiety and some just mental struggles in general, but I have so much more knowledge on how to care for those things and how to just take care of myself in general. And it's, I'm never, I'm never drowning in my brain anymore which is such a beautiful blessing because I could not say that in the past because I wasn't even conscious. Like I didn't even feel like I knew who I was. This one is another baby tea one, but it's funny. It says, I heart hot moms. I got a thrifting kind of recently. I don't wear this one that often, honestly. I might end up selling it, but it's funny. Anyway, what I said before is that I wasn't even conscious before and I truly believe that. I, I remember specifically like the time in my life where I felt consciousness come into my body and it and then comparing it to like the way that I was living before that is crazy because I am so self-aware, I am so grounded, I am so present in the moment and before I was out like I was 100% constantly disassociating. I was just not here and I don't know I don't exactly know when that started or why that started or if that's just how I came to earth, but all of these things absolutely awakened me. Okay, this is one of my favorite shirts. It is from the t-shirt company Carpet Company and they did a collab with a tattoo artist, one of my favorite tattoo artists, and she drew this awesome like astronaut cool monkey character and I had to have it. The problem is that they do like they do like limited stock drops. And as I was checking out with the size large, it was out of stock. And so I had to get a size 2XL, but it's okay because I think what I'm gonna end up doing is keeping the sleeves really long and then like making this just a little bit smaller and maybe a little bit shorter. I know that I'll have this shirt for the rest of my life. So I don't care if the value is a little bit less, but I'm just not a huge fan of the way that it fits because it's a little bit too big. But I got this in black and in white because I knew I needed them both. Um, but I'll just try on the black one for you. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick, I'm gonna do a quick rapid fire of the few t-shirts that I have left just because um, I'm gonna wrap up this story a little bit and it's getting really hot in here. I love these next few t-shirts because I'm kind of tired of changing in and out of them. But this one is a cool like dinosaurs on the front and then dinosaur butts on the back. It's another like baby tee. This one is like a kid's pajama tee, but I needed it because it has a monkey on it. It says, let's hang. This one is cool. It says wet paint Australia. I like the way that it fits. The sleeves are kind of long and then it's like a little bit cropped. Um, this is actually the front, but I like to wear this as the front because I like a big graphic. And then I also have this cool like skull with flames. But what's cool about this is that it changes in the sun, like the flames turn red and the skull turns green or something like that. Another one that my boyfriend got for me online, it's just like a robo fly. It's pretty cool, but I don't really like the way that it fits, so I don't wear it. That is just a random like dinosaur, dinosaur museum type shirt or something like that, but I don't wear this one that often either because it's not really my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna wrap all this up, but I wanted to end the video in one of my hoodies for my brand. I know this is a t-shirt video, but I wanted to give myself a little credit because I think I make some of the cutest clothes I've ever seen my entire life. This is an all over um, Bow Babies hoodie. This is a size medium for reference. I do just wanna take a moment and reflect and admit like, if I hadn't gone through all of these things, I would still be binging so bad. I would be overeating so bad. I would probably have a very severe drug addiction. I would definitely be very messy. I would be probably lazy. I would probably be working a job that I didn't like and I would be miserable. I would be a worse friend. I would be a worse 
I would just be a worse person in general. I probably would have never started making content. I would have, I would have been so much meaner to myself. My brain would have, my, like, my brain was rotting. My brain was at such a low point in my life. Um, and I might have gotten even more depressed and gotten in a really unfortunate state. Who knows if I would even be alive if any of this didn't happen to me. And I can sit here and I can say, oh, like this panic attack ruined my life, but honestly it changed it for the better. And I do still, I do still struggle with things. I, I refuse to eat any caffeine at all. That includes chocolate. I still have not tried chocolate in over three years. I refuse to eat any sugars that aren't maple syrup and honey. I won't eat like lavender and chamomile because I'm afraid of it like relaxing me like weed is supposed to do. Um, and obviously no drugs or alcohol. I also don't have any vinegars or like vanilla extract, orange, orange extract, any extracts because I'm afraid that they're going to get me drunk or get me high or something like that. It just make me feel out of control. And these are all things that I want to eventually try because I know that they're a part of a healthy, balanced lifestyle. But right now I'm still afraid of them, but I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm still evolving beyond, beyond even where I am right now, which is the whole entire point of life. And I mean, maybe I would be in a better place if that, if that didn't end up happening. But regardless, I am so grateful for where I ended up and I am so grateful that I've been able to, that I have this platform to come on to and tell you guys about it and hopefully you guys can relate or you guys can just feel like you're not alone and feel, and not feel completely doomed to living in fear and to living in um, eating disorders or mental disorders or things like that because I struggled with so many different things and while I still struggle with minor parts of these things, and maybe it'll be major in a few months, who knows, I now have the tools to move through these gracefully and to accept all of these as part of the dance as, and as part of this beautiful thing that we get to experience, which is life. And I, I just really am so proud of myself for where I am. And I hope that I hope that this video did something for you, whether it was just educate you on me and a little backstory on the past few years or whether did that make you feel less alone. If I get to know that me going through all of that helped at least one person, it's all worth it. It's honestly all worth it. I want you to guys I want you guys to know that I'm here. Um, you can always comment on my videos. I do my best to reply to everybody. You can always DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is my name, Sephora. Um, and then it'll also be in the description box below, of course, as well as my website. If you want to support me, grab a hoodie or a t-shirt or a necklace or some earrings or something like that. I'm just so grateful. I'm just so happy that I am where I am and that I went through everything that I went through. So if you guys have any questions at all, any recipe recipe questions, any things, any like mantras that I told myself, any like any questions at all on how I went through any of this and just helped myself through any of this, please comment, ask away. I will either make a video in reply or I'll reply in the comments. Um, if it's a really private question, you're more than welcome to DM me, um, but I would still really appreciate a comment as well because it helps this video out more than you know. Um, and also comment if you want some more story times going more in depth with different things that I've already said in this video or just different things in my life. Um, I can do I can do a video on tips and tricks for getting your own place and just everything I've learned through that. I can I can do anything, really. And thank you so much for listening to this whole entire story. Um, I in no way want you guys to pity me or want like attention for this. I really just want to bring attention to situations like this, to everything that I've been through in order to hopefully help other people who are going through similar things or have been through th similar things. And I seriously thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. I love you guys. Please comment other video suggestions in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to me if this is the first video of mine that you're watching. I have a bunch of videos already uploaded and I'm continuing to pop out as many videos as I can every week. Thank you so much. I love you guys.